Hey kids, do you know what time it is? Yes, that's right. It's time for another edition of King's Quest, our virtual Sunday school for Hereford Faith and Life Church. And I'm Miss Jen. And today I have on a raincoat. You know why? Because we're going to talk about the first time that it ever rained. Ever. All right. You ready to have some fun? Okay. Well, the first thing I want you to do if you have those Legos handy from weeks past, I want you, each child or participant, to grab a handful of Legos and build a boat. Okay? So pause the video and build a boat. Okay. Did you build a boat? Let's see them. Here's my little boat. I had some help because it already looked like a canoe. I don't think many people or animals would fit on this unless it was really huge and just looked like a canoe. So let's see yours. All right. Pause and tell about a time that you were on a boat. I wish I could hear all of your wonderful boat stories in person, but for now, I hope that you just had fun remember being on a boat. Well, hopefully we'll be able to get out and go on boats again sometime soon. All right, well remember, God always loves us. Wow, God. And God told Noah how to build a big boat. And he'd need it because God would send a huge flood to get rid of all the sin in the world. All right. I'm going to play the countdown video and it's time to clean up those Legos and get ready to learn. Okay. Okay, jump up with me and let's get a little crazy. Come on, clap your hands. Here we go. That's it. Yeah, we're all in this together and we're having fun. We're here to spread the love of God to everyone. Gonna get a little crazy out yeah. Having fun. 
Okay, everybody have a seat. Think about a time when life felt a little out of control. Maybe you moved to a new town. Maybe you had two big tests on the same day. Or maybe you did something that you later regretted. I know a lot of us feel like this time of COVID has been out of our control and very frustrating. Well, let's make waves with our arms to represent times when life felt crazy. Oh, it's crazy. Well, even when life is flooded with change, worry, or bad choices, God always loves us. And that's our Bible point today. So every time you hear me or someone else say, God always loves us, you're going to shout, Wow, God! So let's try it one more time. God always loves us. Wow, God! Great job. You guys are getting louder every week. You remember Savannah the giraffe. She's our Bible buddy. Giraffes are fascinating. And now it's time for this week's This or That Challenge. You'll hear two fun, fascinating facts about giraffes. And then you'll vote on which one you think is true. So, how do giraffes defend themselves from predators like lions or crocodiles? Do they headbutt or do they karate kick? Okay, so I'm going to ask the question again. And if you think they headbutt, I want you to swing your head side to side, like your butt in the head. But if you think they kick, then I want you to carefully and not hitting anyone else, kick like a karate kick. Okay, so here we go. Get ready to vote. How do giraffes defend themselves from predators like lions or crocodiles? Do they headbutt? Or do they karate kick? What do you think? Let's see those moves. All right, which one is it? Drum roll. It's karate kick. Wow. Well, let's watch the Bible Buddy Verse video to find out more. Hey there, friends. I'm Savannah, and I'm a giraffe. Being super tall gives me a great view. I can spot danger miles away. I look all around and watch out for lions or crocodiles that want to attack. Yikes. Shorter animals like to hang out with me. We're friends. I let them know if trouble's on the way. If I have to, I can defend myself with a karate kick. Pow! Plus, my long legs make me a fast runner. I can escape dangerous situations quickly. You might see me and my friends swinging our necks around, but we're just having a little fun. We save our karate kicks for lions. Sometimes I get a little nervous when I need a drink of water. My head's down low in the water, so I can't see what's coming and my knees don't really bend very well. I'm a little wobbly, whoa. It's a good thing I have friends around to watch out for me. Do you have friends who watch out for you? When friends watch out for you, they show you God's love. In the Bible, book of Ephesians, chapter three, verse 18, it says, and may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. We can read in the Bible about a man who was close friends with God. His name was Noah. God told Noah to build a boat big enough to hold two of every kind of animal. Talk about a lot of animal friends in one place. Because of sin, God sent a flood to wash away everything he'd created but he kept Noah and his family safe. God took care of the animals on the boat too. Wow. When the flood was over, 
God gave the world a fresh start, and he promised to never destroy the world with water again. Sometimes we need a fresh start too. Sin still shows up in our world. People fight, say mean things, and do what they want to do instead of what God wants them to do. But God's love never stops. God gives do-overs. God sent Jesus to wash away our sin so we can be close friends again. Even when we mess up, God always loves us. He'll forgive us and give us a fresh start. God always loves us. The Bible is God's true story of love. The word Bible means book. And this is God's special book. Our Bible memory verse comes from Ephesians 3.18. And let's say the verse together. I know that you must remember it by now. All right. You do the actions with me. I'm not going to have you repeat them every time because I know that you've been watching and you know this by now. All right. So here we go. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep God's love is. God always loves us. Wow, God! So, we can trust him no matter what. Let's sing a song about that. Okay, everybody have a seat. Now it's time for Bible discovery. Get with your group and tell about a time when you were sick and how did you get better? Okay, talk about that with your group. Well, God always loves us. Wow, God! He wants to be close to us. But our sin is like a sickness. It gets in the way and separates us from God. On the one hand, do it with me. On the one hand, God always loves us. Wow, God! But on the other, 
God doesn't love sin. Today, we'll explore a story in the Bible. And instead of just listening to the story, you'll actually help me tell it and play an important part. All right. This is Noah. And here is Noah's family. He needs to keep them safe. Let's read what the Bible says about Noah. I'm reading from Genesis 6, 9. That's right in the beginning, as you may remember. Here is the story of Noah's family line. Noah was a godly man. He was without blame among the people of his time. He walked faithfully with God. Wow. What a compliment. Let's give Noah a high five. Noah wasn't perfect, but he walked closely with God. God has nice things to say about us too, because God always loves us. Wow, God. And Noah loved God. Noah was righteous. That means he tried to do what is right. Everyone else in the world? Not so much. Let's see what was written about them. The earth was very sinful in God's eyes. It was full of people who did mean and harmful things. God saw how sinful the earth had become. All its people were very, living very sinful lives. So God said to Noah, I am going to put an end to everyone. They have filled the earth with their harmful acts. I am certainly going to destroy them and the earth. People were corrupt. That means they had gone bad. Sin had made them sick and rotten. Show me the face you'd make if you bit into a rotten piece of fruit. Here, let's pretend. Ooh, yuck! What once was good had become quite bad. Sin is like a rotten sickness with no cure. We can't make ourselves good again. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin are death. And that's what happened in Noah's story. God told Noah he was going to send a flood that would make all living things die. On the one hand, sin leads to death. But on the other hand, God's love lives forever. God always loves us. Wow, God! And he showed his love to Noah, his family, and two of every kind of animal. God told Noah to build a boat. Some Bible translations call it an ark. So let's pretend to be Noah and we're gonna build a boat. So first, let's chop down some trees. Chop, chop your axes chop 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 those trees okay now we're going to saw them into boards okay saw keep sawing now we're going to hammer the boards together got your hammers nail those boards together we got to make a boat good job all right. Now, God also wanted to save all the animals. And that's you. While Noah keeps on working on the boat, 
we're gonna pretend to be a kind of an animal, all right? So there's probably not enough for you all to be two different kinds. So each person can pretend to be an animal, but you'll remember you have to have a partner too. So it was two of every kind, two by two, okay? So I'm gonna give you 10 seconds to think of an animal. All right, you ready? Go. All right, got your animal? All right, well, it looks like our boat is ready. So let's pretend to be the animals and you make noises and walk like your animal would and we're gonna walk around and get on our big boat. All right, here we go. I guess I'll pretend to be a leopard since I've got the leopard jacket on. Okay, here we go. Let's go to the boat. Wow. Let's go. We gotta get on that ark. Move it, Mr. Giraffe. Out of my way, hippo. Okay. Are you there? All right, have a seat. Woo wee! This place smells like a zoo. <laughs> All right. Well, let's read and find out what happened next. Noah was 600 years old. It was the 17th day of the second month of the year. And on that day, all of the springs at the bottom of the ocean burst open and God opened the windows of the sky. Rain fell on the earth for 40 days and 40 nights. The floodwaters got really deep. You couldn't even see the mountains anymore. Because of sin, all living things died. The people and the animals on the boat were the only survive survivors. So turn to somebody next to you and say, give them a pat on the back and say, we're okay, it's okay. Now let's find out what happened after the flooding stopped. And that was the first time that it ever rained was when it rained for those 40 days and 40 nights. All right. But God showed concern for Noah. He also showed concern for all the wild animal and livestock that were with Noah on the ark. So God sent a wind to sweep over the earth and the waters began to go down. The springs at the bottom of the ocean had been closed. The windows of the sky had also been closed and the rain had stopped falling from the sky. The water on the earth continued to go down and at the end of 150 days, the water had gone down. On the 17th day of the seventh month, the ark came to rest on the mountains of Ararat. The waters continue to go down until the 10th month. On the first day of that month, the top of the mountains could be seen. God remembered Noah, but he, his family, and the animals had to stay on the boat for a while. Maybe it was like being on a really long road trip, or in this case, a boat trip. Probably it was a lot more like what we've been experiencing staying in because of COVID. And that's not any fun. Well, what can we do to pass the time? I don't know. Well, I have something. Let's play I Spy, okay? Now, I guess we'll have to just go on trust, but here we go. I spy with my little eye something thing orange all right you're gonna have to call out guesses giraffe spots nope fox yes correct 
All right. Well, let's see if the floodwaters have gone down yet. We'll have to send out a raven. Well, he came back, but he didn't bring anything with him, so still flooded. Hmm. Time for another round of I Spy. Um, okay. I spy with my little eye something pink. Flamingo, no. Owl's tummy, uh-uh. Yeah, zebra's ears. There we go. All right. Huh. Well, let's go check on the flood and see if we're still flooded or not. Let's send out a dove this time. Oh, nope, still flooded. All right, uh, one more round. I spy with my little eye something brown. Monkey, nope, not the otter. Not the raccoon. Ah, oh, it's the cow. Good job. All right. Let's try to send out that dove again. <gasps> wow. The dove brought a green leaf. It's almost time to leave the boat. Get this. The Bible says Noah was 600 years old when the flood started, and he and his family were on the boat for almost a year. So before we get off this boat, let's help Noah celebrate his 601st birthday and sing happy birthday to Noah. Okay, you ready? Let's sing it together. Happy birthday to you, cha-cha-cha. Happy birthday to you, cha-cha-cha. Happy birthday, dear Noah. Happy birthday to you, cha-cha-cha. All right. Well, let's send out one more dove. It didn't come back. You know what that means? Hooray! The dove found a place to land. Finally, we can get out of this boat. Woohoo! On the one hand, God gave the world a fresh start. But on the other hand, like a yucky cold bug, sin sickness as a pesky way of coming back. But God knew that would happen. So God made a rainbow. God made a promise to Noah to never destroy everything with a flood again. And a rainbow reminded God's people of his love for them. We still see that sign in the sky today. Now it's time to get to the heart of the matter. I want you to think back to a time when you were sick. What were your symptoms? I remember a time not too long ago when I was sick. I had a bad cough, I got coughing and coughing. I had phlegm and goo coming up. I was tired. I didn't feel hungry at all, but I got better. Now I want you and your whole family to talk about a time when you were sick and what your symptoms were. There. Okay. Now, if you've gathered one already, I want you to get a little mirror and a washable marker. And as we talk, I want you to pass the mirror around and everybody can make a dot on the mirror, okay? Sin is like a sickness. And we see symptoms of sin in our lives every day. Because of our sin sickness, we may choose to tell a lie instead of the truth. 
And because of our sin sickness, we may say mean, hurtful things to our friends or family. Now in your groups, I want you to pass those mirrors and the markers around and everybody make a dot on the mirror, okay? Now pass the mirrors around and look at yourself. What do you see? It looks like you're sick with a yucky rash. We can't get rid of sin on our own. We need Jesus. God loves us so much. He sent Jesus. On the one hand, sin leads to death. But on the other hand, Jesus paid the price for our sins when he died on the cross. And Jesus beat death when he came back to life. He gives us new life and a fresh start every time our sin sickness gets the best of us. Jesus washes away our sin. Now, use your wet paper towels or wet wipes and wash that mirror. Okay, and then look at yourselves. Now pass the mirror around and look at yourselves again. God always loves us. Wow, God. And this is how he sees you. Clean, forgiven, and simply loved. Now it's time for a little game. What you need is a container, like a little bowl. You need some slips of paper that are blank, a pen, and maybe a timer, maybe not pens. And what I want you to do is give everybody a slip of paper and a pen and I want you to think of an animal, preferably something that has a distinctive sound. And I want you to write that animal on the paper and fold it up and stick them in the container. And maybe if you have a small group, you can do two animals per person. And then I want you to take turns pulling the slips out and the person will read the, what the animal is and then they'll make that animal noise and the rest of you have to guess what it is. Okay, so you could maybe do two or three animals each. Have fun, pretend to be your animals, okay? So you can pause the video and play your game. Okay, was that fun? I hope so. Well, we figured out who the an which animals people were pretending to be by the sounds that they make. We had to listen. And Noah listened for God's instructions so he'd know how to prepare for the flood. How do you think Noah knew what God's voice sounded like? And how do we know what God is asking us to do today? Think about that. Pause for a minute. Talk about that. Well, God always loves us. Wow, God! Sometimes it's hard to figure out what God wants us to do. But the closer friends we become with God, the more we'll hear and understand His voice. We'll really know who He is. Okay, Savannah, our Bible buddy friend, is a good reminder that God always loves us. Wow, God! God loves us and he gives us do-overs. So let's say that, repeat the verse one more time 
with the motions like we all remember, I'm sure. All right, here we go. And may you have the power to understand as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep God's love is. Okay. Sin is like a nasty virus or sickness. We can't heal ourselves. But Jesus can. I'd like to read you something about our friend Jesus. And as you listen, I want you to think of the place where you're sent when you get in trouble. Maybe it's to your room, or maybe it's to a certain timeout chair. Wherever it is, I want you to close your eyes and imagine that you're sitting in that place. It's not a super fun spot, is it? Now keep your eyes closed and listen to me read about our friend Jesus. God always loves us and gives us do-overs. Jesus knows we do bad things, think mean thoughts, that sometimes we're selfish and disobedient. He knows that's true about us because it's true about everyone. So when we make lousy choices, Let's talk with Jesus about it. It isn't as if he'll be surprised. He already knows all about what happened. If we're truly sorry, he'll forgive us and he'll go with us when we try to make things right. When we say, I'm sorry to that friend whose feelings we hurt, or when we try to return something that we took that wasn't ours to take. As we become closer friends with Jesus, we'll grow to be more like him, more patient, more kind, more caring, more forgiving. We'll still mess up sometimes. I know I do. And he'll still be our friend when we do because he's not our friend only when things go right. He's our friend all the time. Now, with your family or your brothers and sisters there, tell about a time when Jesus helped you bounce back from a hard thing in life. Pause the video and discuss. Now it's time for our prayer requests. So I want you to think about what went right this past week, maybe what didn't go right, what you're hoping for in the future, and something that you need God's help with. And try to get one from everybody there. So I want you to pause the video and discuss your praises and your prayers, and maybe even write them down in a journal so you can look back at them and see how amazed you'll be when God answers them, okay? So pause and think of your prayer list. Okay, let's pray together. Remember, it doesn't matter how you do your hands. The important part is that in your head, you're thinking about talking to God and being quiet in your thoughts so that you can hear if God wants to answer, okay? So let's bow our heads and fold our hands and talk to God. Dear Father God, thank you so much for looking out for us. Thank you for giving us grace to face each day. Thank you for always loving us no matter how we might mess up. Please be with everybody who's watching and their families you know what's on their prayer list lord and please we give thanks for the good things and we ask for your help for the things that are troubling us as we approach our elections in our country we ask for your guidance to make good choices and for everybody to remain calm 
and for everyone to make the best decision that is in your will. And please keep us safe from illness, watch over us, and bring an end to the virus so that we can all be together in person soon. We ask all these things in Jesus' precious name. And everybody says, Amen. Good job, everybody. I really look forward to seeing you. And come on out to Trunk or Treat if you're watching this on Saturday. But if it's past that, I hope you had an excellent Halloween and got lots of candy. Or at least got to carve a pumpkin, dress up. Uh, send me pictures of your awesome costumes. I'd love to see them. Have a great week. See you next week. Bye-bye.